Okay, Unit 2, expand your access to help and learning. Unit 2 is broken down into three sections. Get your questions answered, build your own learning network, and discover lo uh, local uh, Google for Education experts. And uh, before I begin, I just want to let you know real quick to uh, click the link below in the description for a PowerPoint to this uh, for this uh, PowerPoint. Also in the description below is a link to my to the Google for Education directory, and it'll uh, give you a link to my training site. So let's get to it. All right, so uh, section one, get your questions answered. And section one begins with uh, with a video that I have. This is a whiteboard animation, also with some tasks involved. It's on my YouTube channel, but it's also embedded here into the uh, PowerPoint. But um, listen, uh, I would go back and watch this video. It's a good overview, very good overview. overview. So don't stay stuck now when you use these Google tools eventually you're gonna have questions you're gonna get stuck on a tool whether it be blogger drive whatever it is there's gonna be something you get stuck on now when you get stuck and you don't know how to handle these tools Google provides a few simple uh, search strategies and um, there's really three ways to find answers and get yourself unstuck one is the Google search two is the Google help center and three is the Google uh, for education help forums so those are the three ways to get yourself unstuck now um, you have to be able to form the following tasks. Okay, now these are quick links here. If you click these, it'll take you right to uh, one of my videos, and I'll show you how to do a search to find answers. I'll show you how to do a search to find uh, answers from the Google Help Center and the Google Help Form. Okay, these are all parts of other videos that I have on my YouTube channel. So if you have the PowerPoint, you just click the link, it'll take you right there real quick. Now, how to find answers. The first way is Google search. This is just your basic search, right? So begin, if you have any question on a Google tool, just go to Google search, type in some questions, and you'll, uh, you'll, um, you'll get answers, okay? Um, most of the time, web pages will pop up. Also, some short videos will be presented to you. And listen, sometimes a video, like the ones that I have, are much better than just reading. So the first way is Google search. The second way is the Google Help Center to find answers. With this, you'll get like a step-by-step -step fashion, and it's like an advanced search. Like, it, like for example, um, I'll show you as, as it comes up. But um, you could find uh, answers on a bunch of different topics, almost any tool. And the third one is the Google for Education Help Forum. Okay, this is just a group of educators that uh, respond to specific questions that you ask. So it's a brief summary here. If you have you get stuck on how to work a tool or something like that, first do a Google search, then you can try the Google Help Center, and then you can try the Google for Education Help Forum. So here's a look at the Google Help Center uh, right here at the top. Okay, it looks something like this. So I'm having a question on updating Google Chrome. Okay, remember the Google Help Center provides a step-by-step -step fashion. Okay, so you look here, one, two, three, it gives you all steps. And this is the Google for Education help form right here. So these are like threads and different questions. You'll ask questions and different educators will answer the questions. Anybody can respond and answer questions. So here's a scenario for you. Mrs. White wants to share a series of short YouTube videos. Where can she learn this? So where's Mrs. White going to go if she wants to learn how to share YouTube videos? Okay, she can get a clear step-by-step -step guide from the Google Help Center, right? The Google Help Center provides a step-by-step -step guide. The Google Help Center is the middle one right here. Okay, step-by-step -step guide. And it looks like this. Scenario two, Mr. Mr. Go would like some advice and tips for organizing classroom sites. So this guy, Mr. Go, wants tips on, um, you know, on, on, on how to integrate these tools into a classroom. So where should he go? The Google for Education Help Forum. Okay? That's this one right here. Google for Education Help Forum. And listen, you could always do a search for any question you have. Maybe something else will pop up. All right, so this is a quick overview, right? Of uh, This is a quick overview of the whiteboard animation for this first section. Now, let's say you get stuck on how to work a tool. What are you going to do? You're going to do a Google search. Always, You could always start off with a Google search. And if you get stuck on how to do a tool, next step would be the Google Help Center. Now, let's say you're looking for ideas on how to use these tools. Let's say you're saying to yourself, okay, um, I've got Google Forms open, but what are some ideas to do as an educator? First thing you do is a Google search again. You could always start off with a Google, with a Google search. Then I would hit the Google Ed Help Form because you're looking for tips on, on how to use and ideas how to use this in the classroom, right? So if you're looking for ideas uh, classroom-related, Go to the Education Help Forum because there you'll have educators. So 
So this is just a supplement. This is a supp a supplemental video. It's an older video of mine. Uh, it's also on my YouTube channel. I I um, it's you know you don't have to watch this one, but if you're really stuck, maybe go back. It'll help you out. All right. So question one for the lesson check. When you want to provide your students with steps for how to do an advanced Google search, what's the best the best place to look for first? The Google Help Center, right? Step by step guide. You know you want to go to the Google Help Center. Anyone can reply to someone's post in the Google for Education Help form. Is that true? Yeah, that's true. It, it, it doesn't matter. You don't have to be certified. It could, anybody can, it, it's just an open discussion where educators try to help each other out. And you don't have to be an educator. When you're looking for ideas on how other educators are using Google Drive with their students, where would you go? You would go to Google Search. Okay? Remember, anytime you're looking for ideas, your first place could, could be you know Google Search. Um, in the previous one here, I just want to go go back. Remember, this specifically says for steps. If you're specifically specifically looking for steps, I'd go to the Google Help Center because that's where you're gonna get the step-by-step -step guide, right? But here, okay, oh the first, okay. But here you're looking for ideas. So if you're looking for ideas, the first one you're gonna look for is Google Search. You'll get some ideas, and then if you want to get more specific for ideas in classroom use, Google for Education Help Forms. So let's say you tried a new activity with Google Sheets and you like to share with other teachers. What's a good place to share your ideas with teachers around the world? The Google for Education Help forms, right? If, if, um, you, know, if you have a question, you can go there and um, they'll probably answer it for you. But also you could share ideas with others. So you're, you're welcome to go there too because anybody can be a part of the Google for Education Help forms. Unit 2 already. Now Unit 2, uh, Section 2, Build Your Own Learning Network. Okay. These are two videos I have on my YouTube channel. Um, you don't have to watch the, the you don't have to you know you don't have to watch the whole thing, but watch it to, to get just a general idea of what Google Plus is, which is like a, a social um, it's like a social uh, networking site. Excuse me, a social networking platform, and uh, Google Search is this gives you a lot of tips. So you don't have to watch the whole thing, but watch this to get a general idea. Now, um, what is a personal learning network? A personal learning network is a PLN, and it's a supportive network of people that you can learn from. The PLM becomes, it's a community of learners who share your interests and often become professional friends. PLNs include teachers in your school, okay? It could be someone you become close with, or they could be teachers you've never met in person, but you connected with online. When you have a question about teaching or technology or anything related to education, you can go to your PLN and ask them. And one more time, PLN stands for Personal Learning Network. Now, what is a personal learning network? Um... This uh, section focuses on what's called GEGs, the Google Educator Groups, and they're open to any educator, and they're just community of learning professionals who learn, share, inspire, and empower each other. In fact, those are the four words that represent what a GEG is. Learn, share, inspire, and empower. Okay, GEG stands for Google Educator Groups. And if you want to start a PLN, a professional learning network, the best thing you can do, the first step, is to join a GEG. Okay. Eventually, if you become really good, you know, and you're really comfortable, you can start your own gig. But um, you know, begin by joining another gig just to see what it's about. Really get a hang for it. And uh, again, gig is Google Educator Groups. So why should you use gigs? Well, it allows educators to connect with other teachers in in, in your area. Um, and you know, again, once you connect, you could ask all different questions about using uh, Google uh, Education tools. Uh, GEG locations. Each GEG is run locally and has chapters all around the world. So you could search locally for a, gadget, a Google Educator Group in your area. Like for example, I live in New Jersey, so the Google the Google Educator Group I joined was a GEG New Jersey. Okay, and remember, GEGs are open to anyone. Anybody can join them. All you got to do is just one click away. You just got to click join. So for example, let's say you want to know how to join a GEG. Here's a quick link, but I'm actually going to show you. And here's actually a link to the web page. If you have the PowerPoint, you just click right here, and it'll take you to a gig just to join. So I have the web page right there for you. But um, you would just type in, so to join a gig, go to the web page, just click that thing right there, and then you just select your country, and a chapter will come up and choose your chapter. So I would select... United States and then I would go down to the New Jersey chapter or the Northern Jersey or, or whatever so it's that simple you go to the web page and it's Google for Education Training Center 
and you just type in, type in. All right, so create your own PLN. Google Plus, okay? Google Plus is used to join a gig. So gig members use Google Plus. That's a so social networking platform. It was meant to be like Facebook, but it, it never really took off. Each gig has a Google Plus community to join. So when you're joining a gig, you're really joining a Google Plus community. In Google Plus communities, you can post, uh, you can uh, you can post text, you can post videos, links, all different things like that. Now, to be able to create a Google Plus profile, um, I'll show you right here's a, a quick link uh, to a video I made. However, I'll show you right here. Like so, to create a Google Plus profile, you click at the top right, okay, and from there you can click Google Plus profile. And then you could just edit your profile, or you would, if you haven't started already, it'll just, you know, take you to the steps to uh, create your own Google Plus profile. But in the, and when you uh, sign on to your Google account, in the top right corner, you just click on that thing, and you'll see here Google Plus profile. It should take you right to it. Supporting each other by joining my local gag, you can find educators in your area to help you and with transitioning and uh, integrating these uh, G Suite for Education tools. Um, sometimes it's difficult to find same subject teachers in a school to collaborate with, so use the Google Plus to find specific subject teachers around the world. By creating a PLN, you can find teachers who might want to connect to uh, classrooms. So one thing that's becoming popular is you connect one classroom with another classroom. So a classroom in New York City connects with a classroom in Alaska, and they talk about, you know, um, they could talk about the the different geographic. Uh, conditions for living in each environment, uh, all, all all different stuff. All right, so here's a quick here's a here's a quick infographic from that whiteboard video. Just um, you know, again, you can always go you can go back to that whiteboard video. It's a really good summary, very in depth. Okay, what does PLN stand for? Personal Learning Network. PLN, Personal Learning Network. When a teacher creates a PLN. Her PLN may include which of the following groups of people. It could be teachers she worked with in school, educators she met at past conferences, members of her local GEG, Google Educator Group, and people that she hasn't met but that she follows online. To find your local GEG, you can find a list of active groups on the Google Educator Group webpage. Is that true? Yes, right? And I provide the link right here in this PowerPoint. Although, to get to the link, you just type in Google Educator Groups, it'll probably pop up. Google Educator Groups are open only to teachers that have passed the Level 1 exam. Is that true? Only to, to teachers that have passed the Level 1 exam? No, that's, that's not true. Anybody can join a gig. Last section. Discover local Google for Education experts. All right. You can get support from a Google for Education expert in your local area. You can talk to reference schools. And what they do, what they'll do is they'll answer and ask they'll um, answer questions that you may have. Um, you can make a connection and organize PD by finding experts in your area. Google provides a searchable Google for Education directory. Now you want to go to this directory. I'm going to show you how to get there, and that's where you'll be able to find your reference schools, your Google certified trainers, your innovators, all that stuff will be right there in the directory. And I'll show you that coming up. Now, to be in the directory, you must be certified, okay? You must be certified to be in the directory. So let's take a look here. There's uh, four types of experts they're going to focus on. The first one is a Google certified trainer. That, that's me. I'm a Google certified trainer. They provide professional development and training services on Google tools. I have to meet, you have to meet the qualification standards. So I had to pass level one exam, level two exam, and then I had to pass a certified trainer exam, and I have to apply and get accepted. So it's a whole mess. Google certified innovators are different, right? Those are just educators committed to using innovative, uh, committed to the innovative use of technology to transform classrooms. Okay, it's, it's, it's more teacher focused. Okay, certified trainers are more professional development focused. Certified innovators are more teacher focused, and it's about sharing ideas. So innovators inspire other educators towards creative changes. Okay, so certified trainers is more professional development. Innovators is uh, sharing, sharing ideas to transform classrooms. So innovators are more classroom focused. A reference school, that's a school or district that has opted into connecting with other schools and educators, okay? Reference schools provide advice from PD to device deployment. And then you have 
partners, Google for Education partners. They provide services to schools and other institutions, higher education institutions. Um, what's, what's really specific is they include a hardware sales, implementation support, and um, also professional development. So they, they really help, like, uh, you know, these large organizations, uh, you know, get, get things moving here. Google for Education partners. Now, let's say you want to search the, the directory, right, the Google for Education directory. What you do is, here you are at the Google for Education directory, and you could just type in Google for Education directory, and here's the filter. So what you do is, you can filter by, so if you want a certified trainer, if you want location, whatever you want to do here. For example, if you search a Google certified trainer and you're, you put the zip code like New Jersey, there's me, I'll, I'll pop up in the directory. Now, to find, now let me go back real quick. So you might say, oh, how did I get here? I, I'm gonna, I provide a video link on, on how to get there, as a matter of fact. So, you know, you can browse for all four experts. Now, let's say you want to know how did I get to this directory, right, on this previous page. You're like, oh, how did you get there? Well, here's a, here's a quick video link, right? And this is part of, of a video I have on my YouTube. So anything you see here, it's on YouTube, okay? So it, it's not like, you know, you have to... You have to, you know, buy the PowerPoint, but the PowerPoint does does make it go a little bit smoother. So you can browse the, the directory, and there you'll find certified trainers, innovators, Google for Education partners, and reference schools. Okay? In the directory, here's what you can filter by. Product specialities, school subjects, languages, uh, you know, student age levels. Connect with local experts. So let's say you want to connect with another teacher who had experiences using Chromebooks and classroom ideas. That would be your certified innovator, right? If you're looking for a teacher with classroom ideas, that's, a, that's an innovator. If you're looking for advice on deploying um, G Suite for Education, that's a reference school, right? Reference advice, they go together. A local expert to provide PD, professional training, that's a certified trainer, that, that, that's what I am. And if you're looking for an organization with experience delivering PD on Google tools and, 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 you know, and deployment as well, you'd go for a partner because an organization you're looking for a Google partner okay and again if you want to know how to find all four of these just click this link right here this goes to a video and it's actually the same video that I started this off with okay this is actually all found in the the animation video right that whiteboard animation animation so it's all there okay so um, this is just a, a quick infographic now let's go to the lesson check. If you want to find a local a Google expert who can show you some interesting ways, uh, new ways to use Google Maps in your classroom, who would you go to? So an expert with some interesting ways for maps in the classroom, right? Keyword is classroom and interesting ways. Interesting ways. That's the innovator. Okay, Google innovator. Um, a Google expert who could come to your school and do a specific training. What are you going to search for? A Google certified trainer, right? They're going to do training. Don't forget, you could also do a Google for Education partner because they also de de uh, deliver a professional development. But they're, you know, if it's a really big school or something like that, you might want to go to a partner because they, they might have a group of trainers instead of just one. If it's a small school, you might want to just do a certified, just one certified trainer. You don't need a whole partner. Okay, what's not available in the directory? So I talked about four different things, right? Which one here is not in the directory? Google Certified Principles. I've never mentioned Google Certified Principles, right? I mentioned Certified Trainers, Certified Innovators, Reference Schools, and what's the one that's not here? Partners, right? Uh, anyone can request to be listed in the Google for Education directory. So how do you get into the, the directory? You have to pass, you, you have to be certified, right? I had, like I said, I had to pass, uh, you know, uh, level one, level two, uh, the Certified Trainer test, be accepted. So so you know you have to do things anyone cannot just be lifted right so uh, so that's false all right so unit two check which of the following online resources could you use when you want to search for how to do something with a Google tool so what can you search when you just want to learn how to do something with a Google tool you can do Google search right you can also go to the Google Help Center right because you're looking for how to do something from a tool right so you're looking for a step-by-step -step guide remember step-by-step -step is the Google Help Center and you could always start with a Google search don't forget Google for education help forms as well okay you can do all of them okay that that's the whole point of this question you can actually go to all three if you really want to 
If you want to contribute your expertise to a community of educators doing similar tasks, which of the following would you use, right? So you want to contribute your expertise. You want to share what you know with a group of educators. You're going to use the Google for Education Help form, right? Because you want to share your teaching expertise, right? You really can't share it on Google Search. You really can't share it on the Help Center, right? The Help Center just gives you a step-by-step -step, uh, task list. So if you want to share, you're going to go to the Help Forms. Let's go to the next one. Oh, uh, Google, uh, excuse me. Oh, I forgot. Uh, I didn't even see it. Google Educator Groups as well, right? Google for Educator, Google Educator Groups, GEGS. They're also a group of, of, of educators where you share your, your expertise. So don't forget D. Which of the following uh, are reasons you might join a GEG? So why would you want to join a GEG? You want to connect with other ed with other educators using Google tools, plan social events for people uh, to share how they use Google tools for learning, uh, to get ideas from other educators in your area, share amazing things happening in your classroom. So, so they give you a bunch of reasons why you might want to join a gig. So basically, they're saying join a gig. Again, you connect with other with other educators. You can plan social events, get new ideas from other educators share amazing things happening in your classroom which online group or location would be the best place to post a question so that other educators who already use Google education tools can help answer the Google for education help form right these are all educators answering questions um, go to the Google for education directory and search uh, for a Google for education partner in Miami so Pause this right now. Go try this out for yourself, right? So you go to the directory. So you really could, what you could really do is just go Google for education directory, type that in a Google search. It'll pop up. And then you go to your filters here. And if you search it out, you're going to actually get this as your answer. Tiger Direct Business. And of the following, which uh, primarily refers to individuals? What are just individuals? Google for education certified trainers. That's me. I'm just an individual. Google for Educator Innovators, they're just in it, they're just, you know, it's just one person. And all right, so so that's unit two. Now, um, unit one and unit two, they're, they're, this is, again, this is just really like an introduction. It, it's really conceptual, okay? It really wasn't much, you know, having to, you know, do, you know, be task oriented and things like that. Unit three gets into a, a lot of, you know, a lot of Google tools, and then unit four is, is really packed. And then we take it from there. So, all right. So I'll see you in the next video.